listening to Are You Ready Radio with Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. Find Are You Ready on Facebook and Instagram at Are You Ready Radio. You can also visit our home on the web. Just go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the program's link. If you missed the live show, you can listen to the show's archives on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Deezer, and many more, including our home on Spreaker. When a disaster happens, are you ready? Do you have the supplies you need to keep you and your family safe and survive? The Zombie Outpost Store in Wilmington, Ohio. At Caesar Creek Flea Market, stocks quality gear you need to be ready for the next emergency or even a camping trip. Visit zombieoutpoststore.com for location and hours. Check out our assortment of essentials you need when the next disaster happens. Go to zombieoutpoststore.com. Get 10% off a checkout when you mention Are You Ready Radio. Be ready and be prepared. In this digital society, making connections is quickly becoming a lost art form. Yet, if you are a small business owner, building your network is the only way you can get ahead. Can these skills be learned? You bet they can. Read Nose to Nose Networking, no-nonsense in-person networking tips from a master. Who's the master? Well, who better to teach networking and friend-building skills than a golden retriever? The author, Melanie Hope, takes the antics of Abigail and translates them into the human experience. Through Abby, you will learn how to set your intention, build a network, and get into and out of conversations with Grace. If you love the Dog Abby segments on Counterculture Wise Radio, you will love Nose to Nose Networking even more. Find it on Amazon and Barnes & Noble in hard copy, Kindle, and Nook. Visit CounterCultureWise.com for direct links. Greetings and salutations, CounterCultureWise listeners. This is Maximilian von Riegelbeiser inviting you and yours to listen to me and mine. Join me, my sisters Abby and Fritzy, and my weekly guests, my father Jim and Mumsy Melanie, for CounterCultureWise. Max, it's not your show. And we're not your guests, Max. We're the hosts. You may want to rein it in a little bit, buddy. Very well. Tune in every Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific at CounterCultureWise.com for our amazing live variety show. You can even chat with us. If you ask me, though, it should be called Counterculture Max. Counterculture Wise. Radio with heart in mind. Got a spare tire around that waist? Is your muffin top over the top? Do you binge eat uncontrollably? We are the government and we are here to help you. Here at our free FEMA weight loss camp, we have numerous ways to help you shed those unsightly unwanted pounds. FEMA or Fatties Eating Mitigated automatically has a communist-style weight loss czar that specializes in centralized weight loss planning and communal extended fasting programs to shed that fat away in no time. Skin and boned means extra tone is the motto. Just remember, there is no way you can do it on your own. We will forcefully assist you into compliance. Failure is not an option in this utopian wonderland. How fantastic. Typical workout regimes include digging ditches and restocking them with dirt, building railways and more. Get life skills while you get lean. How do you join? Simple. Recite the Constitution in a public commons or violate the Patriot Act that includes simple misdemeanors. It's really that easy to get your own fenced-in slice of Americana. Stop being a fatty. The state is your daddy. If you like what you are listening to, we appreciate your support. A small contribution from you, the listeners, can continue to help bring you such content and help keep things going here. Even if it's just a dollar a month. 
Keep in mind, though, in the spirit of prepping, we believe in redundancy, so it's better to have more than one, but every little bit helps pay the bills. Go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the Support the Show link. You can make a one-time or monthly contribution in any dollar amount. And again, thank you for your support and listening. Are You Ready is an NP Media Group production and is the official broadcast of the Zombie Outpost in Wilmington, Ohio. The views and opinions expressed during this broadcast are those of the host and not that of the station, advertisers, or its affiliates. You are listening to Are You Ready Radio with Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. You never know when an emergency is going to happen. Disaster can strike at any time. Whether stuck on the road, riding out a power outage, escaping a natural disaster, or surviving a doomsday apocalypse, what would you do? No matter the scale, whether one hour or one year, will you survive? You're about to hear what it takes to be prepared. Now ask yourself, are you ready? Have you ever heard the term prepper? What comes to mind? Some of you may think it's a crazy guy with a bomb shelter and an old army truck parked on the front lawn. Well, Prepper simply is a person who is ready for almost any emergency, small or large. It's no different than on a rainy day taking an umbrella with you when you leave your home or putting a coat on when it's cold outside. So maybe you think you're prepared for a brief time in that environment. But what if a few minutes turn into a day or even a year? I'm your host, Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper, and I'm going to use my over 25 years of prepping and survival experience and knowledge in this program to help you and your family prepare to handle almost anything from a small event, from a doomsday apocalypse. So get ready, because I'm prepared to enlighten you to seriously think, prepare, and answer the question, are you ready? And I want to hear anything you have to say about the subject, whatever you may have to offer. You see... It's important that we share our knowledge with each other, learn from each other, and help each other out. You see, the more prepared those around us are, the better your chances of survival will be when a disaster happens. Now, I'm sure everyone has heard the term zombies. Well, those are just those that are not prepared and come after whatever you have. Well, the call-in number is 513-815-6336 if you want to be a part of the show. Again, that's 513-815-6336. Also, check out our live chat room on Spreaker. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, Spreaker.com. Just go to the Are You Ready show, search it right there in the search bar. You can get there live through the website, nickpiercemedia.com. I post exclusive content on the home of Are You Ready on Facebook and on Instagram. Just go to Are You Ready Radio. You can interact with other members of the prepping community before, during, and after our broadcast. So share your knowledge. And again, if you want to call, the call-in number is 513-815-6336. Today's broadcast, we're going to talk about bug-out bags, get-home bags, why they're important, what you need in them, uh, the difference between them, and I'm going to start there. So, you know, emergencies don't wait until you're ready. They happen when they happen, whether you're ready or not. So in the midst of an emergency, you never um, you know, want to look back and say, I should have or I could have. Um, remember, there's no do-overs in survival. In a situation, you first must make a decision to get home, stay where you are, and all that. Well, the purpose of your get-home bag, and we're going to start there, and then we're going to go into bug-out bags, is how will you make it home? If you must make the decision to get home, how will you do it with minimal supplies? And, um, you know, hope you make it home alive. That's the goal. Uh, You'll have to make uh, a massive, you know, you have to make it through. A lot of confusion, fear, panic, and there's a lot of that to deal with when a situation comes up. Um, So do you stay in place? Do you sit out on foot? What gear will you need to make it home? How will you eat? What route will you take? You may have heard past episodes where I spoke of bug out bags, bug out situations, maybe even heard me talk about the get home bag. Not 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 anyone may carry the same uh, bag and no bags will really be entirely alike. 
So in the past when I've mentioned it, I've always just kind of touched on it and said, yeah, a get-home bag, a bug-out bag. But we're really going to dive into it in this one. Uh, really, a bug-out bag is what you would need for the get-out-of-dodge, fit-hits-the-shan situation, just to keep it clean for the radio. <clears throat> and a get-home bag is when the fit hits the shan, <clears throat> keep it clean for the radio, to get home. Bug out bag, you're leaving home. Get home bag, you're trying to get home. So, not everybody's always going to carry their entire bug out bag with them in day to day life. So, it's just a smaller version that you have with you with the essential supplies to get you home. And that's just what we call the get home bag. Nice and easy so far. Some of you have been doing this for many, many years. Some of you may be very experienced. Top of your game. You got your gear ready, and great, good. Everybody should be ready. If you're one of those well-experienced, well-versed um, preppers, survivalists out there, we, we, I wouldn't mind hearing what you have in your bag. Like I said, we want to share our knowledge with each other. Um, but we all have different items that we think we need, and everyone has their own version of what a get-home bag is. Some may call it an EDC or everyday carry, is what EDC is. Sometimes it could be a small survival kit, depending on your daily environment. Some of you may only travel a short distance from your home, and, and some may travel great distances from your home. And depending on the distance, uh, y your bag is going to vary. So, do you need a get home bag? Well, yes. If you're leaving your home regularly, you should build yourself a get-home bag. So, do you work in a school? Uh, do you work, you know, in an office building? Uh, do you have to commute uh, to another city? Do you work locally? So, if you work outside of your home, uh, even if you go shopping, maybe you're not going to work, maybe you go shopping, are you going on vacation? A get-home bag is there to help you Make it home safely following a disaster. Why do you need one? Well, the get-home bag helps you get home to your supplies and loved ones following that disaster. So especially one that uh, disrupts your ability to use modern transportation. Roads may be blocked, things like down bridges, transportation lockdowns, uh, destroyed runways. Uh, sometimes they may become permanently unpassable. You're forced to ditch your vehicle and hike home. Now, before you get your bag, I had this conversation on a weekly basis with at least two people. Any given week. This comes up over and over and over again. Before you get your bag, there's a few mistakes to avoid. And you know what mistakes are on this show. You got it. That leads me to... This week's Prepper Mistake of the Week. That's right. I know it's a little early in the game. Normally we're used to hearing that a little later on, but I figured this is the perfect moment for it. That and there was this bright light in the studio that was on that I didn't turn off before I started the show. So, I guess there's two prepper mistakes. Yes, preppers make mistakes. That was mine. But, uh, so, that light's off. And here we are with our prepper mistake of the week. So... Um, there's a couple of them, actually. They're all related to the biggest mistakes that preppers make, or anybody, before even calling yourself a prepper. Maybe you're just working on a get-home or bug-out bag. Now, this will hold true to both. Any bag, any kit you're putting together, this is true for all of it. So, the biggest mistake, number one. 
And this is how it works for many people building their first bug out or get home bag. They surf the internet, they read some great reviews, they go to the stores, they spend money on a large pack, and you think you found the perfect one. You play with all the buckle straps, pouches, then start cramming all kinds of stuff gathered from around your home into this bag. Then, you either don't have enough room, or there's a bunch of empty space there. Well, a bunch of empty space in that bag, guess what that leads to? Getting more stuff. Because you want to fill up the bag. You want to fill Bob up. Bob, bug out bag, okay? You want to fill it up. So you shove all kinds of stuff in there, and then you can't lift it. Never mind, do what you need it for. Walk, hike, run any distance to get away from any kind of danger. Now, here's what you should do. First, you can scour the lists on the internet. You can figure out what the equipment and gear is that you need in the bag based on your skill. And then gather that stuff first. Then figure out, once you gather all your gear, figure out what kind of a bag you need, whether it's a backpack, a duffel, whatever it is. And you figure out what size you need to fit the gear that you have. And you want maybe a little bit of room to spare. Buying the bag first leads to the supposed need to fill it, usually with supplies that aren't worth the weight and uh, you, you don't need them. Uh, the second mistake that folks like to make when it comes to their bug out and get home bags. Too much weight. The lighter your bug out bag or get home bag is, the easier you'll find it to carry up for a long distance. Start with just the absolute bare essentials and work up from there. Again, selecting your gear is going to depend on your skill, what you're good at, what you may not be so good at, and what kind of gear you need based on your skills. Um, mistake number three. Will you blend in or will you stand out? What environment are you getting home in or bugging out into? Think of your intentions. If you're going to take to the woods off-grid, don't want to be found, and gather nuts and berries until civilization 100 years later um, gets back together in your bug out scenario and you're going to live in holes and build huts and all that, you may not want a bright pink backpack. That one may not be the option for you. However, in an urban environment, camouflage may stand out and draw unwanted attention. So those are the three tips. Buying the bag first, putting too much weight in it, or not selecting a bag that helps you blend, but instead makes you stand out. Now, there's many others, mistakes that some folks may have made over the years. I know I've made many. Those are just my three big ones right there when it comes to a bag. If you have something you'd like to share, chat us in the chat room, or just call in 513-815-6336. And that was our prepping mistake of the week. Now, If you're walking around, we'll say, the city, going back and forth to work, you're in an office building, you know, in business dress, you may not want a camouflage tactical backpack. I mean, that may not fit in with your professional office setting. Now, I, at times, have to go into an office. And when I do, I do do have a different type of bag. It looks kind of like a laptop bag. It's a commuter bag, kind of. It does look a little tactical. That's just my style. But it doesn't scream, Doomsday Prepper, I have all this gear in here. And, uh, you know, really stick out. So, 
if you have, we'll say in that example, like if you have a black laptop bag or a leather laptop bag, maybe a laptop bag that also turns into a backpack that you can carry on you so you're not carrying it in your hands, um, like a commuter backpack instead, whatever, um, that may be more of an option for you, at least for your get-home bag. Okay, we're just going to focus on the get home bag now. All three of those mistakes that I just mentioned are great for both scenarios, get home and bug out. But let's focus now on just the bug out bag. We're going to focus on that for the first half of the episode, and then we'll get into our bug out bags on the last half of the episode. So you, you want to make sure that you find something it, that, that's the right get home bag for you. You need one that's durable, you need one that's rugged, you need one that's portable, something that's well-designed, and of course, priced right. You may not want to break the bank on this. You don't want one that's too cumbersome to carry. You want something that, that you're able to take with you every day. So make sure it's comfortable. Make sure it's not cumbersome. If it's too small, you won't be able to take all the critical survival items that you may need. If it's too big, it's just clunky, it's a pain, it sticks out, it's not something that you're going to carry with you all day. If it's too heavy, same thing. But regardless of whether it's a bug out bag or get home bag, you do need some key items. And here's some key items to consider along with the type of bag. So first let's look at the key things that you will need in any survival situation. Water, shelter, personal protection and safety, fire, food, and your get-home plan. Okay? I'm going to dive into all these after this quick timeout, so I want everybody to make sure that they stick around with me. This is going to be a short one. This is not a very long one at all. And uh, so we're going to run this commercial real quick. So, like I said, I'm going to dive into all these once we take this quick timeout. I will also be covering bug out bags, like I said, the second half, and also have this week's financial tip, prepper's kitchen tip, and the prepping pet segment. Stick around. I'm Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. You're listening to Are You Ready? Find Are You Ready on Facebook and Instagram at Are You Ready Radio. You can also visit our home on the web. Just go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the program's link. If you missed the live show, you can listen to the show's archives on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Deezer, and many more, including our home on Spreaker. When a disaster happens, are you ready? Do you have the supplies you need to keep you and your family safe and survive? The Zombie Outpost Store in Wilmington, Ohio at Caesar Creek Flea Market stocks quality gear you need to be ready for the next emergency or even a camping trip. Visit ZombieOutpostStore.com for location and hours. Check out our assortment of essentials you need when the next disaster happens. Go to ZombieOutpostStore.com. Get 10% off a checkout when you mention Are You Ready Radio. Be ready and be prepared. If you like what you are listening to, we appreciate your support. A small contribution from you, the listeners, can continue to help bring you such content and help keep things going here, even if it's just a dollar a month. Keep in mind, though, in the spirit of prepping, we believe in redundancy, so it's better to have more than one, but every little bit helps pay the bills. Go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the Support the Show link. You can make a one-time or monthly contribution in any dollar amount. And again, thank you for your support and listening. You are listening to Are You Ready Radio with Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. Welcome back. 
Here we are. All right. Are you ready? Prepping and Survival Radio here with you this wonderful Wednesday evening live. We are live every week at 7 p.m. Eastern Time and respectively across the world at whatever time that would be in your time zone. And today's episode, Bug Out Bags, Get Home Bags. And um, before the break, I wanted you to think about some of uh, the essentials that you think you're going to need in your bag. So, again, these are not just going to apply to your Get Home Bag. This will also apply to your Bug Out Bag, which I'm going to talk more about later. So, we are back. That was a brief, quick timeout. And uh, one of the first items that I mentioned was water. And we're not talking about, you know, the metal canteen, army canteen, a simple water bottle. I recommend a some type of sealable metal stainless steel water bottle that you can... It looks like an average water bottle, like a regular, you know, something you carry with you every day. It doesn't stick out. It blends. And uh, you can get them with all kinds of different, like your favorite team on them, this, that, and the other. But make sure it's a stainless steel bottle that seals. Because if you need to purify or make water more potable to drink in an emergency situation, you have something that you can boil water in. Uh, You don't necessarily need to have um, in your get-on bag at this point, um, you know, some major water... um, you know, purification systems, pumps, and and all that. Now, yeah, for water, there are two essentials, not just the water bottle, but another way of gathering the water to purify. And sometimes just a small collapsible water bladder that you can buy them relatively cheap for like 2 $3. Uh, I know we sell them in our store. I think they're about 2 bucks. Don't hold me to it. Uh, but they're on our hooks. Uh, rolls up, you can use that to collect the water that you need to purify, and then use your water bottle of stainless steel or metal to, uh, you know, put it in to, to make it drinkable. So, like I said, stainless steel water bottle, and along with that, some way to purify or, you know, drink from a source if you're not able to make a fire and you've got to drink on the go. Now, those water straws are life straws. I don't know if you've ever seen them before. Aquamari makes them. They were, I think, the founder of them. The frontier straw, they call them. Um, life straw is another common name for them. And uh, what that'll do is you'll have several days' worth of water that you're able to drink through that straw. Most of them are rated for about 30 gallons on the lower end up to, I think, about 50 to 100 gallon on the higher end. And, uh, you know, you want to have a way to be able to drink from the source if possible. And those water straws are great. If not, you're going to have to take the time, which is going to slow you down, having to collect water, purify it, and all that, during the collection bladder, and then purifying in the water bottle. And, of course, the easiest way is to boil it because, uh, you know, uh, that's going to take time. You've got to wait for it to cool. So natural water sources are oftentimes contaminated with viruses, bacteria, parasites, or even chemicals that may make you sick or even kill you. So having one of those life straws is key. And um, this is where the water straw comes in very handy. Um, It filters the water. Um, I know mine, I think it filters out. Yeah, yeah, Aquamarine, it's 99.999% harmful bacteria and parasites. Same thing with, like, virus stuff like that. Um... Those are it's called an inline filter. I was trying to remember the name of it, inline filter. So it consists of a filter with a straw that you stick in there. Uh, they make a version that could also attach to uh, a water bladder if you have one for your backpack or the uh, bag of wine from your refrigerator. I'm sure you can adapt it to do that. A box of uh, twisted tea, the bag from that. You can, you can do a lot with different attachments and some duct tape. Be very creative. Um, well, <clears throat> water, water thinking about water here um you know here we go i know already uh, three messages so far on facebook alone that i'm just gonna i'll throw it out there people have been counting down in the in the messages on our uh, facebook page the messenger because i'm talking about water and typically around that when i'm talking about water straws and purifying water yes I could get off on my rant about water purification tablets. 
Okay. I will not disappoint. I will deliver. Now, my thing with water purification tablets, it's a waste. In my opinion, it's a waste. They sit around forever. You never use them, and they expire. When they expire, this is not just like, oh, well, the aspirin expired two years ago. We'll just double the dose. No, this is, when they expire, this is your water, and the the active ingredients in there that are supposed to purify the water are no longer active. In prepping, like when I spoke about food storage, you store what you eat and you eat what you store. Water purification tablets are the same way. They will expire. When they expire, you don't play with that. You get rid of them. Water purification tablets are very expensive. Water purification tablets do not have a very long shelf life. Once you open them, they just clog together, and they're really useless. So, unless you live in an area of the world or the country where you need to use water purification tablets every single day, do not bother stockpiling, carrying, or even putting them in your bag. Forget about it. Don't bother. They are a waste of money, a waste of space, and um, you don't want to deal with it. Well, this is the bottom of the hour break, the official commercial break. You're listening to Are You Ready Radio. I'm Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper, and we will be right back after this hard time out. See, that wasn't a bad rant about water purification tablets, was it? That was nice. Find Are You Ready on Facebook and Instagram at Are You Ready Radio. You can also visit our home on the web. Just go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the program's link. If you missed the live show, you can listen to the show's archives on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Deezer, and many more, including our home on Spreaker. When a disaster happens, are you ready? Do you have the supplies you need to keep you and your family safe and survive? The Zombie Outpost Store in Wilmington, Ohio, at Caesar Creek Flea Market, stocks quality gear you need to be ready for the next emergency or even a camping trip. Visit zombieoutpoststore.com for location and hours. Check out our assortment of essentials you need when the next disaster happens. Go to zombieoutpoststore.com. Get 10% off at checkout when you mention Are You Ready Radio. Be ready and be prepared. In this digital society, making connections is quickly becoming a lost art form. Yet, if you are a small business owner, building your network is the only way you can get ahead. Can these skills be learned? You bet they can. Read Nose to Nose Networking, no-nonsense in-person networking tips from a master. Who's the master? Well, who better to teach networking and friend-building skills than a golden retriever? The author, Melanie Hope, takes the antics of Abigail and translates them into the human experience. Through Abby, you will learn how to set your intention, build a network, and get into and out of conversations with Grace. If you love the Dog Abby segments on Counterculture Wise Radio, you will love Nose to Nose Networking even more. Find it on Amazon and Barnes & Noble in hard copy, Kindle, and Nook. Visit CounterCultureWise.com for direct links. Greetings and salutations, CounterCultureWise listeners. This is Maximilian von Riegelbeiser inviting you and yours to listen to me and mine. Join me, my sisters Abby and Fritzy, and my weekly guests, my father Jim and Mumsy Melanie, for Counterculture Wise. Max, it's not your show. And we're not your guests, Max. We're the hosts. You may want to rein it in a little bit, buddy. Very well. Tune in every Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific at CounterCultureWise.com for our amazing live variety show. You can even chat with us. If you ask me, though, it should be called Counterculture Max. Counterculture Counter Wise. Wise. 
Radio with Heart in Mind. Got a spare tire around that waist? Is your muffin top over the top? Do you binge eat uncontrollably? We are the government and we are here to help you. Here at our free FEMA weight loss camp, we have numerous ways to help you shed those unsightly, unwanted pounds. FEMA, or Fatties, eating mitigated, automatically has a communist-style weight loss czar that specializes in centralized weight loss planning and communal extended fasting programs to shed that fat away in no time. Skin and boned means extra toned is the motto. Just remember, there is no way you can do it on your own. We will forcefully assist you into compliance. Failure is not an option in this utopian wonderland. How fantastic. Typical workout regimes include digging ditches and restocking them with dirt. Building railways and more. Get life skills while you get lean. How do you join? Simple. Recite the Constitution in a public commons or violate the Patriot Act that includes simple misdemeanors. It's really that easy to get your own fenced-in slice of Americana. Stop being a fatty. The state is your daddy. If you like what you are listening to, we appreciate your support. A small contribution from you, the listeners, can continue to help bring you such content and help keep things going here, even if it's just a dollar a month. Keep in mind, though, in the spirit of prepping, we believe in redundancy, so it's better to have more than one, but every little bit helps pay the bills. Go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the Support the Show link. You can make a one-time or monthly contribution in any dollar amount. And again, thank you for your support and listening. You are listening to Are You Ready Radio with Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. You're listening to Are You Ready Radio. I'm Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. And uh, this week, bug out bags and get home bags. So, uh, we were just talking about water and yes, water purification tablets. You know, and, and this is why folks like to accuse me of ranting about this all the time and how useless they are and this, that, and the other. It's really because, like I was saying, it's eat what you store, store what you eat. And unless you're living in an area of the country where you... Um, have to use water purification tablets or area of the world we have to use water purification tablets all the time it's silly to store them you know no one sits down here we go no one sits down at their table and says well we got to rotate our water purification tablets tonight so let's have water purification tablets for dinner it doesn't happen so I always say it's a waste I maybe in the three years At the zombie outpost, someone has come in and asked for water purification tablets. They have heard this before. Uh, Let's see. Moving on from water. Shelter. You know, remember, we're going through the essentials here. Shelter's the next one. The bare necessities that you need in your get-home bag. Now, if you work or travel to an area further away from your home, maybe it's, I don't know, 10 miles away. That's not unreasonable. On an average day, someone may walk 10 miles in a few hours um, at a park. Maybe on a trail, a little nature trail somewhere. Okay? Well, that's pretty easy. Unless there's a big disaster. So maybe a five-mile trip home down the roads that you normally know. Two miles. Down familiar territory. So you've walked through... 
day after day after day for quite a while, maybe many years. Now all of a sudden is impassable. Maybe a 10-minute drive may take you uh, maybe a day or two to reach home. So think of your get-home bag that way and plan on having just a simple, even just a down-and-dirty shelter, a way to make shelter. Again, this is going to depend on your skill. Now, you can get things like those emergency tube tents. I mean, they go super easy, one string, a couple stakes. You can do it with rocks. You could, you, you could take a can of creamed corn and hold down the corners if you have to. Okay? And they're very easy. It's just shelter. Not every day is going to be a bright, sunny day when a disaster happens. The weather is not going to be 70 degrees and sunny. And it's going to stay that way for the duration of time it takes you to get home. So having some way to shelter you from the elements, something lightweight, and again, it depends on your skill, have something in your pack. Those emergency tube tents weigh nothing. I mean, they're a couple ounces. And, you know, if if you can't get one, and you're working on your bag right now, I know there's a lot of you out there that you listen to this broadcast and you sit there and you go through your gear. And I love hearing your stories. So um, if if you haven't heard about this, now, again, this is our relaunch. We've only been on the air for a little over a month now on the relaunch of Are You Ready? Now, Are You Ready has been on for many years. But there's still a tradition of people like to listen to this broadcast and they go through their bags, they go through their gear, they go through their kitchens, they go through their plan. They kind of set aside the original hour and a half, and now it's two hours each week. To that, That's their time that they spend going through their preps or their plans and their gear and stuff like that. It's really cool. So if you're going through it right now, and maybe you just have a couple garbage bags and some clothesline rope. Maybe if you just have a tarp. You know, something as simple as a tarp and some rope is all you need to make a little roof over your head. Remember, this is just get home, fit hits the shan situation. You're not checking in to the Ramada. You're not going to the pier. So, down and dirty, tarp, some rope. Um, even an emergency blanket made of Marler makes a, a, a good little tent too. It traps your heat in, so if you live in a colder environment, you know, uh, definitely, and and I would always have one of those in your bag anyway, because that comes along with shelter. It's also great for first aid. So, uh, as, as far as the Mylar blanket, uh, yes, it could be used for a number of things. It could be used for, as a rescue blanket, as it's sometimes called. It's an emergency, uh, you know, uh, space blankets is another name for them. Space blanket, that's what I'm thinking of. Space blanket. So th- there's a lot of different names it goes under, and uh, it's it's really just a, a, a Mylar emergency rescue space blanket, whatever you want to call it. They're very lightweight, and uh, you can even turn those into shelters as well. Um, another thing that works great, and this is what I keep in my pack, is a bivvy, B-I-V-V-Y, bivvy. They're like a little mini lightweight sleeping bag made of Mylar. And I keep the bivy and power cord in there. I'm not too worried about a tube tent. In my little kit, I have a car kit, and I have my EDC um, get-home bag. Now, the EDC is in my get-home bag, so everything is kind of component module. If I'm, you know, in a building somewhere, maybe I'm just in the mall or something, shopping. I have my little EDC on me. Now, that gets me to the car. What I have in my car will get me home if I can't take the car truck. Whatever it is, okay? Now, in my car kit, I have an emergency tube tent along with, like, the water in a bag packs and all that, which I'll get into. If I don't get it into this episode, I'll definitely get into a future episode, especially when we talk about a car kit and uh, power cord. So... I have a backpack that I can get home in. I have a little mini EDC that has just the basic few essentials. Just to go maybe that little time. Now, if I was going into a larger city, and we'll say maybe I worked in a big office building, 
typically you take public transportation or you park your car in a garage or a lot somewhere. And you walk a block or two once you park to get to your building and go up 50 floors, 20 floors, 100 floors, whatever, to go to your office. If I was leaving my car for that reason, then yes, I would have my full get-home bag with me. A uh, quick stop into the store, and I know my chances of getting back to my car, leaving this store, are about 90% fit hits the shan situation, and I can get to my bag if I can't move the truck for whatever disaster happened, whatever, then at least I can get my gear and start making my way home. Um, so my get-home bag is also designed to be able to bug out if needed, so it's a little more than the average get-home bag, uh, beyond the simple essentials that we're talking about for the purposes of a get-home bag, because I kind of designed it after what I called my 10 and 10 in 10, probably about 10 years ago. So it was under 10 pounds, 10 by 10 inches, and I could last about 10 days out of that little uh, side pouch. It's really all it was at the time. Um, now, since, now I've always had this backpack, and that was enough for me, um, my smaller backpack, uh, one of the east-wests uh, I've had uh, quite a while now. I think we're probably going on to 11 or 12 years even, if I remember right. And I have to go back and look at its birth date in November. <laughs> Long story about that. So, uh, shelter, over the years, I can pretty much make shelter out of a lot of different things. I'm no stranger to shelter, same thing with fire. So over the years, the kit may get smaller because it always is based on your skills. And um, if you're one that doesn't really know much about shelter, being able to get into shelter and being resourceful in that way, then you may want to go for that emergency tube tent and have the bivy and even a hammock. So those are just a couple things depending on your everyday environment, like one of those pocket hammocks tied between two trees or two poles to something uh, just to keep you off the ground. That's kind of in my car kit, not my get home bag, because eh, if I make it and I can grab it, great. If not, no big deal. It's not about comfort. Remember, we're not checking into the plaza here. We're just trying to get home. So that's pretty much the gist of shelter. Now, another key element is the safety and personal protection. Along with that, I'm also lumping first aid. This is not where you're going to need major surgical kits and, uh, you know, a, a whole field hospital, a mass unit. What you're pretty much need is enough basic first aid supplies. It's lightweight. It's small. Things like bandages, gauze, antiseptic cream, some alcohol swabs. Um, you know, just simple medical items to help you get home safely. Now, for the massive wound, if it's something real deep where something happens, where you get a laceration, a small compact, they make these one-handed tourniquets. One-handed tourniquets, they can be used with one hand. And if I just have a small little metal tin with some basic first aid items, that wraps it. When I, I know which metal tin is my first aid kit because it's got the tourniquet wrapped around it. I can pull that right out of the bag, slide it off from around the tin, right around my arm, leg, whatever. If I have major bleeding, that can't be stopped with simple first aid things. I've now controlled the bleeding. If you cut a major artery or you know vein or you know, anything like that, and you're able to uh, at least reduce or stop the bleeding temporarily, and your priorities change then. Now it's, okay, I need to address this before I'm even going to make it home. So that's where the shelter thing, that's where maybe some more, again, training, 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 and wisdom and knowledge come in to be able to address serious wounds like that. Um, but simple first aid items are adequate for, for a simple get-home bag. When it comes to personal protection, though, it, and it, okay, don't start lighting them up. I'm going to shut the phone lines down if this starts happening. When it comes to personal protection, everyone has different beliefs and ideas 
Also, laws may play a role in what you can and cannot have. At this point, you may not be fighting the zombie apocalypse yet. You're just trying to get home to your gear and your family. Let's keep it there. You may not need a... You're not going to need. May not. I'm not going to say you're not. You never know what the situation is. Plan for the worst. Or, you know, plan for the worst. Hope for the best. We get that. You, you may not need a whole arsenal of weaponry. So, this is not going to be the debate about firearms and lethal force, non-lethal force. You simply want to safely make it home. That's why not standing out when it comes to selecting your bag and all that may be key. Maybe you don't want people to know that you're some prepper. So, camouflage, city environment, people know you may have something. If it's a laptop bag, they'll skip right over you. The zombies. The zombies will skip right over you. Those that are not prepared and do not have that come after whatever you have. If it looks like you have, you're the target. When it comes to personal protection, though, and self-defense, okay, yes, some of you may have your concealed carry permits if you need them. Some of you may carry. Some of you may have firearms and all that. Great. Beautiful. You should. If that's what works for you. If you don't believe in guns, you don't believe in firearms, and you want to sing Kumbaya while you're getting shot at, hey, great. You should. If that's what works for you. We're not going to turn this into the gun debate. So... You want some sort of personal protection to give you an advantage in your bag. And remember, this is just a fit hits a shan situation. Order and law may be restored in a short amount of time. Maybe it's going to take longer. Maybe it'll happen within an hour. Maybe it'll happen next year. We don't know. So again... Remember what the laws are in your area. What constitutes lethal force, equal force, and all that. I would at least recommend having something, whether it's a baton or pepper spray, a stun gun, even nunchucks. Have something that you're you're comfortable using and make sure that it's effective. Check your local laws. Remember... This is something that will, be, that will be in your bag everywhere you go. So there may be some restrictions in buildings and even simple traffic stops that could get you into trouble. If you forget that it's there and it's discovered, or whether you don't forget it's there and you have it and you either got to tell them or they find it, if it's discovered, you could be in trouble. So... Look at things like, um, I believe, I think, in all states, and again, local laws and all that may vary. Even if you don't know how to use weapons, even if you don't know self-defense, maybe you haven't taken a karate class in your life, maybe you've taken five or six, maybe you've taken two or three years of karate and self-defense. Great! You have an advantage. But always assume that someone else has an advantage over you. Someone may have been doing it longer. Someone may be stronger. Someone may be faster. So, stun guns. The stun gun flashlight is great. Um, It's a multi-tool then. And two for one. One less piece of gear. It's a stun gun and a flashlight. Get something that's easy for you to use. Uh, You're going to want a flashlight in your bag anyway. So this is really a great two-in-one deal. Cuts down on the weight. Um... You're not going to be raiding buildings with this. It's not going to be mounted to your rifle. So it doesn't have to be this, you know, you know, super extreme tactical flashlight. This is your get-home bag. And, again, you want something personal protection. So stun gun with a flashlight, it's a great option. Uh, Most will come with different arm brakes on them, uh, which are the spikes on the front, arm bars. Barbs, I should say, um, along with the flashlight. And, of course, there's where it arcs and creates the sparks. So um, I also recommend, 
even um, besides a stun gun, stun guns could make noise. They make a lot of noise. Yes, it's a very distinct sound, kind of like a shotgun. You rack a shotgun, people know what that is. People know what a stun gun is going off. Um, however, it's a close-range self-defense tool. I'd recommend pepper spray because by the time someone gets a hold of you, the stun gun needs to be ready. Pepper spray, you need to have ready when you need it, but it's a distance self-defense device tool. Remember, none of these are weapons. They're devices. They're tools. So, you know, that, that may be one of your best options as well. I know that we're coming up to the top of the hour, so we're going to cut to this uh, to our next break right now before we run out of time. And um, we'll get into fire, food, some other stuff that you may want to have in your bag. And then I want to get into bug out bags. We're halfway there, folks. Just about wrapping up get home bags. Some of this is going to be in your get home. Uh, we're just about wrapping up get home bags. Most of this will be in your bug out bag. I'm Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. I'll be right back. Find Are You Ready on Facebook and Instagram at Are You Ready Radio. You can also visit our home on the web. Just go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the program's link. If you missed the live show, you can listen to the show's archives on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Deezer, and many more, including our home on Spreaker. When a disaster happens, are you ready? Do you have the supplies you need to keep you and your family safe and survive? The Zombie Outpost store in Wilmington, Ohio at Caesar Creek Flea Market stocks quality gear you need to be ready for the next emergency or even a camping trip. Visit zombieoutpoststore.com for location and hours. Check out our assortment of essentials you need when the next disaster happens. Go to zombieoutpoststore.com. Get 10% off at checkout when you mention Are You Ready Radio. Be ready and be prepared. In this digital society, making connections is quickly becoming a lost art form. Yet, if you are a small business owner, building your network is the only way you can get ahead. Can these skills be learned? You bet they can. Read Nose to Nose Networking, no-nonsense in-person networking tips from a master. Who's the master? Well, who better to teach networking and friend-building skills than a golden retriever? The author, Melanie Hope, takes the antics of Abigail and translates them into the human experience. Through Abby, you will learn how to set your intention, build a network, and get into and out of conversations with Grace. If you love the Dog Abby segments on CounterCultureWise Radio, you will love Nose to Nose Networking even more. Find it on Amazon and Barnes & Noble in hard copy, Kindle, and Nook. Visit CounterCultureWise.com for direct links. Hey, how you doing? This is Magic Pierce inviting you and yours to listen to some good friends of mine that have a show, too. Did you really think my daddy is the only one that just runs his mouth all the time and that's the only thing I listen to? (laughs) No, it's not. I got a show I listen to on Sundays. Join host Max and his co-host, my hottie Fritzy, and of course my good friend Abby on Counterculture why Sundays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern. They have their own human guests, Melanie and Jim, each week. They don't meow a lot, but you get what they're saying. Now let me tell you, You have to go to CounterCultureWise.com. Use your paws to play with the mouse and scroll down to the the on-the-air button on the right to hear their show. Just click on that. After that, watch them on Periscope like I do. Daddy gives me a little mouse to play with, and I get parts the whole time. It's a great show. Check it out. CounterCultureWise.com. If you don't tune in, I get cuckoos on you. Thank you so much for that ringing endorsement magic. It warms the orange hearts of me and Abby and the gray heart of Fritzy to hear you say such amazing things about our show. I'm pretty sure that Mumsy and Father have pink hearts, so we will assume their hearts are warmed too. Eh, forget about it. 
I catch you guys. Good peoples. Got a spare tire around that waist? Is your muffin top over the top? Do you binge eat uncontrollably? We are the government and we are here to help you. Here at our free FEMA weight loss camp, we have numerous ways to help you shed those unsightly, unwanted pounds. FEMA, or Fatties, eating mitigated, automatically has a communist-style weight loss czar that specializes in centralized weight loss planning and communal extended fasting programs to shed that fat away in no time. Skin and boned means extra tone is the motto. Just remember, there is no way you can do it on your own. We will forcefully assist you into compliance. Failure is not an option in this utopian wonderland. How fantastic. Typical workout regimes include digging ditches and restocking them with dirt, building railways and more. Get life skills while you get lean. How do you join? Simple. Recite the Constitution in a public commons or violate the Patriot Act that includes simple misdemeanors. It's really that easy to get your own fenced-in slice of Americana. Stop being a fatty. The state is your daddy. If you like what you are listening to, we appreciate your support. A small contribution from you, the listeners, can continue to help bring you such content and help keep things going here, even if it's just a dollar a month. Keep in mind, though, in the spirit of prepping, we believe in redundancy, so it's better to have more than one, but every little bit helps pay the bills. Go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the Support the Show link. You can make a one-time or monthly contribution in any dollar amount. And again, thank you for your support and listening. You are listening to Are You Ready Radio with Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. Welcome back. Welcome back to Are You Ready Radio. I'm Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper, here with you this wonderful Wednesday night. Check us out on our social media. You can get there on Facebook and Instagram. Just go to Are You Ready Radio. And this week, we are talking about bug out and get home bags. And uh, we're just wrapping up our get home bags segment now, and then we're going to get into our bug out bags next. And we pretty much covered uh, most of the essentials so far. We're up to personal protection. Now, of course, fire and food are going to be key. If anybody has anything they want to chime in with, our phone lines are open. You could also um, go ahead and uh, chat us in our chat room on Spreaker.com. Let's see. Fire. Yes. You know, folks sometimes don't realize that maybe they will need... um, a way to start fire when they're trying to get home. Yeah, fire. Sometimes people think that, like, oh, that's like wilderness survival stuff. That's in the woods, you know, off-grid, eating nuts and berries, foraging, you know, for bird guts and all that. No. You know, you're going to need a source of heat. You may want to signal for help. You may need to boil water to drink. You know, uh, light, another thing you use fire for, and there's so much more. You know, again, depending on your skills, you need a quick and easy way to start a fire. Um, Really, wherever you are in the wilderness or dark alleyway, it it doesn't matter. Um, You you want the option to start a small fire. So have some matches, a lighter. You you don't need a bow drill kit. You don't, you know, need a hand drill. You you just make the little hand drill friction fire method. Hey, if he can do that, that's great. But have some sort of easy way to start a fire, uh, some type of tinder. And what I always found is great um, for both, uh, an easy way to start a fire and tinder. 
you know, matches, if they get wet, you know, they only burn so long. Wind is a factor with that. You, you light a match, you burn the match, you lose a match. Um, yeah, eventually, you light enough matches, you may have this nice small little pile of uh, tinder, but it's not a, you know, not a guarantee 100%, depending on your environment. So, um, lighters are great. In extreme cold, though, they're hard to light. They freeze. So, here's one for you. If you know how to use a fair rod, a simple way to make a spark and some tinder, a little fair rod, fair seam rod. Um, I don't know if you ever saw, like, those survival shows, or if you ever watched some of my uh, YouTube videos and all that. You, you just strike it with the back of a knife, a metal, you know, some type of steel, and it sparks. Kind of the same concept that's in the, like, cigarette lighter. It sparks. Well, um, those are great. But if you want something that does the spark and a flame, I love what's called a permanent match or forever match. Now, you've probably seen these things advertised all over, like, Facebook, Instagram, um, all over the Internet, like, you know, nine ninety nine or, you know, order now and get two for nine ninety nine. you know, shipping, this, that, and the other. Well, the um, these are they're really not that expensive, folks. Three bucks online. I've seen them on like eBay for like six, seven dollars. I mean, they're getting up there online. Um, I know we, we we got them at the store. They're uh, two ninety nine, I think two ninety nine, three ninety nine, two ninety nine, I think. Um, it's called a permanent match. It's got a wick. It's a little canister. Little tiny pocket, little mini flask is really what it looks like, and it's got a striker on the side. So it's got the first seam rod, the ferro rod, striker on the side with the steel on the tip of the match that inserts into it. And instead of a a uh, you know, expendable sulfur tip that you'd have on a match, it's a cotton wick like you'd have in like an oil lamp uh, or a lantern like that. You strike it, it lights, and you have a reusable match. You got fluid, you got the ferro rod, you create a spark, even if you run out of fluid, or if your wick burns down, you still have um, a way to strike, to make spark, to make a fire, just like a regular ferro rod. It's got the added bonus of the lighter fluid inside. You can fill it with kerosene, anything that's non-combustible, that's flammable, uh, lamp oil, uh, <laughs> even a uh, citronella oil, uh, tiki torch oil, whatever. So um, that's a great option. Um, they, they, they burn a little hotter than a regular match, um, once the match is going. Now, when first strike a match, it's extremely hot. But, uh, you know, you get the point. Small, compact, a little bit of tinder. Uh, jute twine is great. Um, mini, uh, cotton discs, uh, compressed towels, um, toilet paper, um, cotton balls. You know, anything you can have. Make a small little fire kit. So that you have something on you because your whole point is not to waste time trying to source things, but just have a small little kit on you. Make a small little fire kit. And it just needs to have maybe one or two methods to start a fire and some versions of Tinder that will work best for the situation. And in one little, I don't care if it's a plastic baggie, it doesn't have to be that sophisticated. So having something to make fire with, make a little fire kit, keep it in your bag, and not just in your get-home bag. You may want to make another one and keep it in your bug-out bag. Because you're going to need something in there, too. Now, food. A lot of times people put food as a low priority in your get-home bag. Because they think it's like, eh, this is just so I can get home, I just run well, over there, it's like, eh, I'm just a mile away. But again, roads are impassable. You're not driving. Maybe you got to go through different terrain. Maybe the landscape may not look the same. you got to figure out what you're doing, where you're going. It may take you longer to get there. So it really isn't as low of a priority as a lot of folks think it is. Because you're going to want to have at least a few calories to keep your energy levels up. I mean, yes, see, you can survive several weeks with calorie depletion. You can, yeah, I mean, you can go three weeks without food. But again, 
you depending on your skills. You may be able to find plants that exist naturally in the environment. Maybe you can trap. You can forage. You can hunt. You can fish. You can, you know, whatever. But at least if you have a few Slim Jims or some granola bars in your get-home bag, it makes life a little easier. And make sure the food you have is non-perishable. And I like to try to find things in, like, single servings. So once you open it, you eat it all, it's done. You don't you don't have half packages, half bags, half, you know, whatever. Single serve is great. A whole box of Captain Crunch, full-size, family-size box of Captain Crunch, in your get-home bag, yeah, it's really non-perishable, but once you open it, I mean, it becomes a pain, you know, especially if you live around a beach. The seagulls are just going to eat your bag once you open that thing up. They'll eat your whole get-home bag. So that's another thing to look at. Once you open up food, and it's not single serving, it's something you're going to carry over and keep going back to to revisit, you're going to want to have uh, something single serve because it keeps rodents, insects, and all that away from it as well. Last thing you want is to be sleeping on your get-home bag in an alley somewhere in your little tube tent and uh, you know, in the city somewhere. And a bunch of rats and mice are starting to eat through your bag to get to your, uh, you know, I don't know, Captain Crunch. Lucky Charms. So, those are the essentials of your bag. But wait, there's more. There always is. You know, preppers love gear. We like to talk a lot, too. Two hours, that's why you listen to this. Uh, you know... Your get-home situation may require evasion, but other times it's rescue. So a couple things you want is a way to communicate, signal, and get attention for, we'll say, rescue. And uh, one of the best things is like a whistle. You know, any way to send a signal somewhere so people know where you are and a whistle's great because you don't have to build three signal fires, which is three fires, which is a signal help rescue fire, three separate fires. Um, you don't need to make a stick, a staff, or anything like that to run a bandana up, flag that says help, anything like that. Signs, posters, light up billboards, and leg lamps and windows. You know, you want something, yeah, a bandana can be used to signal for rescue. It could be used as a water filter. It could be used for first aid. It could be used as a dust mask, a tourniquet. Um, you can really break it down and use it as cordage. Uh, it can be a washcloth, a towel, a uh, pot holder. You can use it to collect food, berries, nuts, and all that if you're foraging in the woods. Because you're Mr. Off-Grid Survival Man. Uh, let's see. I mean, there's a number of things a bandana can be used for. But um, a whistle is great. Bandanas don't. You know, take up much space anyway. They're very lightweight. So, I mean, you could just walk around all the time in a bandana. It's one less thing to keep in your bag. Now, of course, in addition to that, a knife. Uh, And I'm going to do a whole episode on finding the right knife. I think it would be a majority of one episode. Um, you, you You really do want a good pocket knife. You know, at least even if it's a multi tool, or you know, or even a survival knife. I mean, it, it's your it's your knife. Depends on what you need it for. Now, those little wallet cards are great. I, I know that they're very underrated. Um, once people get one and they've used them, they love them. But sometimes folks look at it as just like a weird little gimmick. They really aren't. It's the real deal. A good solid multi-tool um pocket multi-tool card i think there's like 11 or something items on there everything from can opener bottle opener knife saw back um, wrench screwdriver stuff like that and all fits in your wallet um having one of those is very handy it's got a knife edge on it and sometimes that may be all you need you know maybe that is your multi-tool and then maybe a good solid folding pocket knife or a larger fixed blade knife again with knives Certain areas of the country may consider those weapons. Of course, do you have any weapons on you? No. What's that? Oh, that's a tool for opening boxes. Okay. 
It's not a weapon. It's a tool. And knives are tools. All depends on how they're presented. So, um, you know, each each one, whether it's a pocket knife, a multi-tool, or a survival knife, they all have their own purpose. Um, having all three is great. Do you really need it in a get-home bag? Probably not. Again, depends on your skill. Depends on the situation and the plan. But at least two. Maybe some sort of fixed blade knife that could be used as a, you know, harder tool, self-defense and all that is great. And then maybe just a multi-tool type knife or one of those multi-tool wallet cards is great. Um, You know, if you really have to go with one, though, at least get a multi-tool because you're going to want some of the... um, uh, some of the benefits that that could offer you uh, versus just having a blade, and that's all it is. But along with the rescue thing, I want to go, I, I mentioned this earlier, communication. Uh, communication uh, is, is very key, and a lot of times people take for granted the fact that their cell phone may always work. Now, I have to this day still carried around a backup cell phone it doesn't really have service on it uh, well it's not on a plan it gets service but it's not on the plan but it's um, a cell phone that is from a different carrier than what I use completely opposite carrier of what my normal plan is on now my thing is with this in the backup cell phone thing is during you know you ever see those TV shows where it's like When did you become a doomsday prepper? Well, I'm not a doomsday prepper. I'm just a prepper. I'm a survivalist. But uh, you can label me that way. That's fine. I don't care. It doesn't bother me. But, you know, it's like, when did you become a prepper? It's like, oh, um, 9-11 when I realized I really didn't have everything that I thought I needed. And, um, yeah, that was a bad day. That was my wake-up call. That's when I realized, okay, I need to do a little more, and I need to do it now. This is a different world. That's when I found out when I was a prepper. So uh, during then, uh, communication was completely shut down. Landlines weren't working. uh, Cell phones weren't working. Everything, the the, the government literally shut everything down for communication. The only thing that was really working, though, was CB radio, ham radio. And the thing was, was... One carrier would go down, another one was working. I remember communicating to someone in the family in one of the other buildings down there, and we were trying to figure out how to get to them. And the landlines and all that for the stock exchange were not working, they were pretty much destroyed. But um, cell phones really weren't what they were back then as they are now, but nonetheless... They shut communication down. Now, we were able to jump messages between one carrier was up and going. And then if we got in touch with that person on that carrier, we'll say, um, I think Nextel was a big one at the time. Uh, Their direct connect feature seemed to have been working. So if we knew someone with a Nextel, we'd be able to chirp, is what they called it, to chirp them and, you know, someone else with a Nextel that would then give information to the party that we're trying to communicate with. And we'd be relaying information in that way. If that wasn't working, one particular landline service was, the carrier, or the one particular cell phone service was, and it was, it was, it was crazy. CB ham, two-way walkie-talkie, all that remained consistent. There was no uh, interruption there. So, Having communication, having a walkie-talkie with the general neutral channels, I guess we could say, is very helpful in a widespread emergency disaster. Traditional means of communication are often shut down, as we found out even during 9-11. Uh, so getting in touch with loved ones after such a disaster becomes impossible. We know that now. You want to know whether your family is safe. Are they being forced to evacuate? If so, where are they taking them? Should they try to wait for you? Follow evacuation orders? Who's got the kids? Who's got the goldfish? You know, you have no way of coordinating 
you know, these emergency decisions if you have no way to communicate. So, for example, we didn't know we're getting a guy, if he was coming on a barge, if he was coming on the one ferry that was evacuating people out of Manhattan, if it was, you know, going to land in Jersey City, Hoboken, then it was Jersey City again. You know, at least we had communication and everything turned out to be okay after all. But, uh, without communication, uh, it would have been very difficult. It would have been a guessing game. It would have been, we don't know, and you can't just sit around waiting forever to find out. Time really was of the essence. Uh, a couple other important things to have in your kit. Uh, again, just for get home. Toilet paper. Yes, toilet paper. You know, having just a small portion, you know, average would normally take you to, to take care of your paperwork. And some wet naps in a vacuum bag, sealed tight, keep it dry. Makes it more compact. Um, it's also a morale booter, builder there. Morale booster. Uh, poncho, keep you dry. Again, depending on weather, elements, your environment. Uh, gloves. And, you know, um, the next few items that typically come up when it comes to your get home or bug out bag. Some people think it's over the top. Uh, binoculars, map and compass, and especially when it comes to maps, topographical maps. I'm going to touch on those real quick. Those are also going to be very handy in your bug out bag. Um, you know, binoculars don't need to be a huge pair of those, you know, see forever binoculars, but just a small compact pair. Uh, just being able uh, to spot potential threats. I want to be able to see them well before they spot you. Um, it also helps you to avoid some hazards um, that you may not be aware of down the road. Getting into a high vantage point, which you may need to communicate in larger cities. You want to be up as high as possible if you can. Get get your signal and uh, transmissions in and out. Um, do a quick survey of the land. Know what you're in for. You're going to want to see things over a distance if you're planning on going that direction. Because you don't want to walk 10, 12 miles in one place and find out it's not passable and you have to go back. Very counterproductive. Binoculars will help you see up ahead if you can see. Again, line of sight. Map and compasses. You want to make sure you know what direction things are. Like I said earlier, the territory, the terrain, and all that may not look the same depending on the disaster that happens. So people could be disoriented, knowing which direction you need to go. And topographical maps will help you do that too. You know, road maps are great, but we're so dependent on GPS. Uh, so much now, but you don't know the best and safest route if you can't take a road. Do you know where all the natural water sources are that you may want to pass along your way? You need to be able to pull out a map and plan your best get-home route while looking at the terrain and the emergency itself. Are there cliffs? Um, what do you need to avoid? What about swampy areas? Steep, uh, steep ravines? You know, every city has unique terrain and a topographical map will help you navigate this terrain, and especially in worst-case scenario if your GPS is not working. So if you're not familiar with the area, especially what may be in between you and your destination, because you may not be taking the road that you drive every day, those maps will be very beneficial to you. If you want to uh, navigate uh, any unfamiliar terrain, you'll also want a compass to keep you on point. Without a compass and dense forest, you know, even in an empty space, you do have a tendency to walk in arches. And times people will accidentally walk in circles, especially if very limited visual cues. I am going to get into a little bit about the um, uh, maps and all that. I have a hack for that and uh, some insight on that when we get back from this first break. We do need to take a quick time out. Coming up to the last half hour before we dive through bug out bags, I'm Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. You're listening to Are You Ready Radio. I'll be right back.
Find Are You Ready on Facebook and Instagram at Are You Ready Radio. You can also visit our home on the web. Just go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the program's link. If you missed the live show, you can listen to the show's archives on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Deezer, and many more, including our home on Spreaker. When a disaster happens, are you ready? Do you have the supplies you need to keep you and your family safe and survive? The Zombie Outpost Store in Wilmington, Ohio at Caesar Creek Flea Market stocks quality gear you need to be ready for the next emergency or even a camping trip. Visit zombieoutpoststore.com for location and hours. Check out our assortment of essentials you need when the next disaster happens. Go to zombieoutpoststore.com. Get 10% off a checkout when you mention Are You Ready Radio. Be ready and be prepared. In this digital society, making connections is quickly becoming a lost art form. Yet, if you are a small business owner, building your network is the only way you can get ahead. Can these skills be learned? You bet they can. Read Nose to Nose Networking, no-nonsense in-person networking tips from a master. Who's the master? Well, who better to teach networking and friend-building skills than a golden retriever? The author, Melanie Hope, takes the antics of Abigail and translates them into the human experience. Through Abby, you will learn how to set your intention, build a network, and get into and out of conversations with Grace. If you love the Dog Abby segments on Counterculture Wise Radio, you will love Nose to Nose Networking even more. Find it on Amazon and Barnes & Noble in hard copy, Kindle, and Nook. Visit CounterCultureWise.com for direct links. Greetings and salutations, CounterCultureWise listeners. This is Maximilian von Riegelbeiser inviting you and yours to listen to me and mine. Join me, my sisters Abby and Fritzy, and my weekly guests, my father Jim and Mumsy Melanie, for CounterCultureWise. Max, it's not your show. And we're not your guests, Max. We're the hosts. You may want to rein it in a little bit, buddy. Very well. Tune in every Sunday at 6 p.m. Pacific at CounterCultureWise.com for our amazing live variety show. You can even chat with us. If you ask me, though, it should be called Counterculture Max. Counterculture Wise! Radio with heart in mind. Got a spare tire around that waist? Is your muffin top over the top? Do you binge eat uncontrollably? We are the government and we are here to help you. Here at our free FEMA weight loss camp, we have numerous ways to help you shed those unsightly, unwanted pounds. FEMA, or Fatties, eating mitigated, automatically has a communist-style weight loss czar that specializes in centralized weight loss planning and communal extended fasting programs to shed that fat away in no time. Skin and boned means extra tone is the motto. Just remember, there is no way you can do it on your own. We will forcefully assist you into compliance. Failure is not an option in this utopian wonderland. How fantastic. Typical workout regimes include digging ditches and restocking them with dirt, building railways and more. Get life skills while you get lean. How do you join? Simple. Recite the Constitution in a public commons or violate the Patriot Act that includes simple misdemeanors. It's really that easy to get your own fenced-in slice of Americana. Stop being a fatty. The state is your daddy. If you like what you are listening to, we appreciate your support. A small contribution from you, the listeners, can continue to help bring you such content and help keep things going here, even if it's just a dollar a month. Keep in mind, though, in the spirit of prepping, we believe in redundancy, so it's better to have more than one, but every little bit helps pay the bills. Go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the Support the Show link. 
You can make a one-time or monthly contribution in any dollar amount. And again, thank you for your support and listening. You are listening to Are You Ready Radio with Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. back with the final half hour you guys are taking a lot of notes and working on your bags as we speak or at least gathering the gear that you think you may need to put in your bag as we speak remember you may not be ready to buy that bag yet before we run out of time we also have some things i want to make sure we get in this episode our prepping for pet segment and of course our preppers kitchen financial segment i don't think we did any of those yet um, but hopefully we do not run out of time. If not, we could always save them for next week. Always great tips. And uh, so let's move on. Let's kill that one. So uh, let's see. So as far as the final bit of gear that you want to make sure that you have in your um, bag, your, your get-home bag. And and I have uh, before, uh, earlier in the episode, I did mention about my original little get home bag uh that's on our facebook page if you just go to facebook are you ready radio and you'll see a link um it's an older post from when we first did this broadcast oh i was flying solo back then this is a couple years ago but anyway it, it's on there it's also on our instagram page uh, you'll be able to find it there and i've made some changes but it'll give you the idea but overall um You'll you'll be able to get the idea of what I have in mind. Now, before the break, though, I was talking about um, successfully navigating unfamiliar areas and topographical maps. Now, for you digital junkies out there, um, if you've ever watched a uh, video on the YouTube channel that I did called the Zombie Net, there's a tablet. Part of your bag, and your particularly bug out bag, and you can use this camping and all that. It's a lot of fun. It's a offline version of the internet, and on there I have everything from important documents to um, lyrics and guitar charts, chord charts for almost every popular song. And once I downloaded it, it stays downloaded, and it's offline. Now this tablet's many years old. If you go back and watch the video on the YouTube channel, but there's a particular app that I got and I downloaded that all the maps, now this does take up quite a bit of space, it's mytopo.com slash maps. They offer an app that you can download for Android, and I believe I'm sure by now they have it for Apple, that is mytopo, um, is the name of the 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 app, mytopo, maps, whatever. So that's mytopo.com. And uh, just go to mytopo.com slash maps. You'll be able to download free uh, digital version of topographical maps, which pretty much cover the entire country, and some of Canada and some of Mexico, um, is what I've loaded in there. If I'm ever going to another country, I'd probably just reload a new batch on there. And, you know, they're not road maps. This is the terrain. And uh, topographical maps will tell you the elevation, distance between different elevations, what the inclines are and all that. Um, A lot of features about the landscape. So very handy, more so than a road map. If you look out and there's nothing but a zombie apocalyptic wasteland out there, um, you'll definitely have the advantage with some of those. Now, a small pocket-sized radio is also another great thing. Now, when it comes to emergency disasters, like I said, emergency is key. So the more information you have, the better. You can never have too much intel, 
in any catastrophe. So something that, you know, is maybe hand cranked, solar power, anything like that is best. Um, now, if you have a two-way radio, um, most of them do come with an FM band on there that you can just push or switch over to FM mode on them, and uh, that'll typically suffice. So uh, that's the gist of the uh, Get Home Bag. Now, again, not everything that I mentioned, not every piece of gear is something that you may need in there. Again, this all depends on your skill. And we get into bug out bags, you're going to realize that as well. So, um, speaking of our bug out bags, we should probably jump into that because we are running out of time. Now, a bug out bag is bigger than a get home bag. So, how are we going to put this in a half hour? Well, folks, we may not. We may end up turning this into a two part episode. But when you are getting ready to buy your bag, again, before you begin filling your bug out bag with all your survival gear and supplies, you do want to make sure that you get a high quality bug out bag. Make sure that you get one that has a nice, thick, tough fabric. You want something that may include like a Molly or Alice system, which are those straps you can attach other pouches and stuff onto. You want something that has padded shoulder straps, maybe even a chest strap or some padded hip support straps. You need to make sure it's water resistant. Or um, some manufacturers, they don't have a water resistancy on them. Um, you could get shells for them, which just protects it from the elements. Of course, you want something with high-quality zippers, straps that hold and secure the zippers, and the straps that are on your shoulder. Pretty much holds the weight and the zippers. And something with a lot of pockets and compartments that can help keep you and your survival gear organized. So, um, that that's pretty much the gist of what to look for with a bug-out bag. And before we run out of time, I do want to... Um, Throughout there are prepping a uh, kitchen tip of the week. So, um, you know, getting into the whole bug out bag thing, and I'm going to be talking about our cook kit here because it's something that maybe you can have in your get home bag depending on how far your trip is, but having something in your bug out bag uh, for cooking is essential. And a little tip that I did with mine, and I'm probably going to make a video on this on putting together your little bug out cook kit. In my bug out bag, I had this small cook kit. Um... Now, if you are familiar with my normal cookware and my cooking at home, if there was a lineup of cookware in bug out kits, you would never pick this out of a lineup as it being mine. But it's the most practical, lightweight cooking option for my bug out bag and it's suitable for most of my needs. So in a little pouch in my bag, I have my little cook kit. Inside is a little mini eating tool, disposable gloves, a small sponge, a little bit of little tiny bottle of dish soap, a cloth, and the pouch with this little cook kit inside. And that's all inside the cooking kit itself, which is just lid and pan fold out handle. Kind of like one of those World War One and Two cook kits. Um, in that pouch with the cook kit is a small folding metal stove. And in this small little stove, when it's folded up, is also a little fire kit, some salt packets, a pack of soy sauce. I know, everything has soy sauce on it. Soy sauce can make anything that you catch in the wild taste good. It's small, it's compact, lightweight, and it could be used for so much more than just cooking. I should make a little video about this one, and I'll post it on the YouTube. Now, I don't know if it's going to go up this week, but just thinking about it, I'm thinking of throwing it out there. When you're looking for a small cook kit for your bug-out bag, um, 
I'd highly recommend it has those elements. Some way to keep your hands clean from being contaminated with anything raw that you're prepping. A way to clean anything that you've cooked in. And uh, something extra for some season and flavor. Salt is great. Soy sauce, again, there's salt in there. Your body needs salt and sugars. Um, so soy sauce is also, in my opinion, one of my morale boosters. And a fire kit. So that's pretty much everything you need. If you have anything you'd like to add, feel free to throw it in the chat room. And that was our prepping kitchen tip of the week. Now back to bug out bags, though. Um, that's just one element of your bug out bag. Now, everything in your get home bag, you're going to need in your bug out bag. Your bug out bag is just an extension addition of what you're going to need for long term leaving your home. Now, maybe your bug out plan is uh, you're not planning for the zombie apocalypse. You're not planning on um, maybe uh, you know going off grid, like I always get around gathering nuts and berries in the wild for years, living below ground living off the land, hunting, fishing, scavenging, all that. Maybe that's not your bug-out plan. Maybe your bug-out bag is designed for... Um, there's a fire. And you're going to have to check into a hotel for a few nights, but you need to get to work and the kids need to get to school while each of the kids have their bug out, little bug-out bags that have maybe simple toiletries in them and a change of clothes they can wear to school. You have a change of clothes you can wear to the office. Um, you know, whatever your thing is. Maybe if that's what your bug out bag is for, then great, start building it there. Maybe that could fit right in a suitcase. Maybe you don't need a special backpack that you can trek through the woods in, hike long distances. Um, so you're still going to need certain things like a way to secure shelter, water, heat, fire, food, and all the essentials that's in your get-home bag. But it, that those are the basics. Your, your, your bug-out bag has a lot of the additions, too. So in your bug-out bag, do you have a way to check into a hotel? If maybe your bug-out bag's designed for the purpose of a fire. Maybe there's a flood and you're evacuating. A fire. A uh, wildfire or something. Maybe that's what your bug out bag's designed to do. Throw it in your vehicle and go. Maybe it's go to a relative's house. Maybe it's go to a hotel. Everybody has a way to still clean up and go to work, school, the store, and continue with their normal life the next day. So having a change of clothes in there, which you may not need in your get-home bag, you may also want to add additions such as more in-depth um, things that maybe a gas mask if you have wildfires in your area. Um, you know, multiple things. Now, if you're in an area that's prone to a lot of bad weather, maybe like one of those entrenching shovels, uh, maybe you're going to need some sanitation items beyond what you would normally need um, just for a day or two trying to get home um, feminine hygiene products maybe some hand sanitizer maybe a better uh, flashlight um, like I said um, you know when it comes to hygiene products maybe that's what you're going to need maybe a razor to shave a bar of soap some shampoo and uh, you know think about whatever the situation is that you're in now, medically-wise, in your bug-out bag, you may be looking at maybe larger forms of first-aid items. You have a bigger bag. This is for a longer haul. And you may be dependent on maybe a small surgical kit, ace bandages, um, peroxide, you know, uh, other things, but more antibacterial uh, ointments, maybe, maybe a couple days' supply of your medication. If you have any medication, maybe more band-aids, more surgical tape, things that would, um, 
you know, not necessarily the short term that you can get by for a day or two without the things that you may need for the long term. Um, so, um, what is it? Maybe a whole, you know, maybe 100 feet of paracord. Maybe you're going to need some zip ties in there. You're going to want a sleeping bag. Again, this is more longer term. Maybe a ground pad or sleeping mat. Maybe a whole tent. Maybe that's where your hammock is. So a hammock and a tarp and a, you know, some type of shelter items and all that with a sleeping bag go a longer way, especially when it's long term. Maybe this is where you're going to have maybe a slingshot or a blowgun or something, a sewing kit, uh, maybe some heavy-duty work gloves. Maybe this is where you have maybe a way to collect water from a pump, some snare wires, and uh, a way, you know, more ways to trap or, you know, go fishing. So, um, again, you still want it all to be very portable. You still want it to be uh, lightweight. And I could sit here and tell you, Every item in the ideal bug out bag. But at the end of the day, you need to be able to carry it. All the items in your bug out bag need to travel with you all the time, everywhere. This is all you have now, is the best way to look at it. Everything that fits in the bag is all you have, and you need to take it with you everywhere. So you want to make sure that you're able to get anywhere you need to go. And you want to make sure that you can carry it with you everywhere you need to go. So it goes back to get your gear together first before you buy the bag and don't overload it. Because you may be walking miles in this thing. Or if you're lucky enough, maybe this is just the bug out bag just to leave the home and go down the road. At least you have something that you can easily take with you in a split second when you need to leave. Um, Again, you're going to need the water. You're going to need a way to get food. You're going to need, you know, your shelter. You need everything you need in your get-home bag plus some. This is not you're just going to live off the snacks in your get-home bag for a day or two. This is where you may actually be cooking a meal, and that's why a little cook kit is very handy and valuable. A little stove, so you're not always having to build a lot of fire and stuff. They make small little butane stoves. They make small little, um, almost like Bunsen burn. I mean, you could, there's so many different versions of portable backpacking stoves out there on the market um, to look at, find what works best for you. It's also a way to help purify water, not just cook meals. Um, you're going to want maybe a, a larger than, you know, fishing kit. Um, I mean, so much, you know, and I, and I recommend adding things like a daily multivitamin supplement in there. Uh, change of clothes. This is where you want a sewing kit to repair clothes, buttons, snaps, or stuff like that. This is probably where you want your larger survival knife. This is long term. This is going to go for a while. This is maybe where you want the survival hammock. This is where you want the sleeping bag. Maybe you want to add some zip ties, some duct tape, maybe more fire starting um, ways in there. Um, so maybe you're going to have your matches. Then you're going to have your, you know, uh, fire steel, fire starters, flint, and, uh, you know, more tinder. Um, along with your medical kit, this is beyond a simple first aid kit. You're going to have your personal medications for the extended time. You're going to have more maybe wound closing devices, maybe sutures if you're able to do that. A small surgical kit, more surgical tape, bigger Band-Aids, more Band-Aids, a magnifying glass, tweezers, um, even things like aspirin, antidiarrheal medication, um, anti-acid medication, um, blood clotting sponges. And again, tampons are good for that. Think feminine hygiene. Um, You're going to want a lot more in your bug out bag because this is more long-term, long haul than what your get-home bag is. Um, You're going to want maybe a headlamp and not just a flashlight. Maybe you want to have two hands free. Maybe a walking stick. Some type of maybe um, small little bone. Anything. More personal protection. Um, I mean, there's so many things, even including a deck of cards. I mean, it's just something to pass the time. Um, I mean... What I can do is, uh, there's a list. If you go to zombieoutpoststore.com, and you can also get there through the Nick Pierce Media 
uh, nickpiercemedia.com website, there's probably over 100 items that you could put in your bug out bag. Again, this is not everything that you have to have in your bug out bag. This is stuff that you should consider when building your bug out bag. You may not need all this stuff, and you're not going to need it all the time. Again, this is specific to you. We've got 10 minutes left, and we have um, a segment I want to run before we leave. And we can't forget about our prepping for pets segment. <laughs> Okay, so this week's segment, uh, for our pet prepping segment, uh, does have to do with our bug out bag and uh, bug out get home situations that we're talking about. Same reason why we need a bag is the same reason why we should also train our train our pets to be able to bug out and get home with us. The first thing you need to do is to protect your dog or cat. And, you know, you really want to make sure, or at least ensure, that it will obey your commands when it matters most, especially in emergencies. So, for example, for starters, you know, say it's a, it really is an important thing to teach. It's It seems like most owners find teaching um, stay is one of the most challenging. So you always want to stay on top of training, especially from the time they're very young, to make sure that they're responsive to your commands. It's also useful to train your dog or cat to bark or meow, as well as be quiet. You also want to train them to refuse food from strangers and carry their own bug out bags. And I'll get into that at a later segment when it comes to uh, more prepping for your pets. And they should also learn to stay close to you and follow you without a leash. They also need to learn how to run away and hide until you call them and teach them to protect you or your family. All these are very important when developing your plan. And you have to make sure it's done right because you don't want to make an aggressive pet. You don't want it to cause problems. If you're not able to train, if, if they're not able to be trained, if they're too old to train or maybe, um, you know, in bad health, that could be injured or ineffective in an emergency, have a cage or a leash ready to protect them and put them in so that you can ensure their safety. So um, that's our pre pet prepping segment this week, and I do apologize. Um, last week we weren't on the air, and I, I thought I'd be able to make it through that one just fine. Um, but I didn't. Uh, this was a very rough show. Our producer, my producer, Magic, who has normally, and if you haven't noticed, a technical rough run of this one, um, he's been trained not just for bug out and bug in situations and get home situations and follows commands. He also pushes buttons and does, uh, you know, knows timing and commercials and knows what he's doing and um, 
for about 12 years. Uh, 2010, I believe, was my first uh, broadcast that I was ever on. He learned how to do a lot of the push this button and keep track of time and knew the sound of certain things and what certain lights meant and would help me run the show here. He passed last week and is no longer with us, and um, that pet segment was dedicated to him. And he'll forever be missed in the studio, and we'll have some more great uh, tips that he's taught me over the years about prepping for your pets um, that I have documented and done videos on and have shared over the years, and I'll continue to share those to make sure that um, he'll continue to keep your pets safe and prepare to make sure that your pets are also ready. Well, I hope that I helped you seriously think, prepare, and answer the question, are you ready? I'm Nick Pierce, the Barefoot Prepper. I would like to thank everyone for tuning in and the support you give the show. Our guests, the callers, our friends and chat, uh, listeners, uh, clients, customers, everybody at the store, everything. Find Are You Ready on Facebook and Instagram at Are You Ready Radio. You can also find us on the web at nickpiercemedia.com. Click on the program's link. Find us on your favorite podcast platforms and on our home on Spreaker. To contribute to the show, go to Nick Pierce Media and click on the Support the Show link. Are You Ready Radio is the official podcast of Zombie Outpost in Wilmington, Ohio and is an NP Media Group production. If you like what you are listening to, we appreciate your support. A small contribution from you, the listeners, can continue to help bring you such content and help keep things going here, even if it's just a dollar a month. Keep in mind, though, in the spirit of prepping, we believe in redundancy, so it's better to have more than one, but every little bit helps pay the bills. Go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the Support the Show link. You can make a one-time or monthly contribution in any dollar amount. And again, thank you for your support and listening. Find Are You Ready on Facebook and Instagram at Are You Ready Radio. You can also visit our home on the web. Just go to nickpiercemedia.com and click on the program's link. If you missed the live show... You can listen to the show's archives on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, CastBox, Deezer, and many more, including our home on Spreaker. <laughs>